Good morning, Hope Wow. Would you stand and worship with us this morning? <laughs> the praises of your people, which makes you present in this place. Be glorified here today, Lord. We praise you. In the midst of the storm, in the midst of the joys, you're worthy. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah Sing praise to you, Lord Cause my weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me I'm gonna sing In the middle of a storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The King
Lift your voice in praise. I raise a hallelujah. Right to you, Lord Jesus. In the middle and inside of me. I raise a hallelujah. I will watch the darkness flee. I raise Trust you, Lord. Oh, I raise a hallelujah. Cause fear you've lost your hold on me. Sing. I'm gonna sing in the middle of a storm. Louder and louder. You're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes. Oh, well. Lift our voices, ready? Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing it out. Sing a little louder. Yeah. Sing a little louder. Your turn. Sing a little louder. Oh, praise you, Lord. Sing a little louder. Oh, sing a little louder. Here we go. Sing a little louder. In the presence of. to say in this moment 
we want to offer yourself an acceptable worship in awe of who he is. For he is not shaken. We receive a spirit from the Lord that is not shaken. We receive a spirit that is full of peace and of comfort and of joy that is beyond ourselves. So as we go into this song, just surrender yourself knowing that the God that we serve in awe and in wonder of who he is, is so beyond ourselves. So beyond anything that we can do or anything that we can say. But that through every moment from now on, we say, yes, I will to who you are, God. And we'll be able to offer ourselves and worship in all that we do and say.
tells us don't be anxious about anything but in everything with with prayer and petition with thanksgiving present our request to you God and you are going to fill us with peace that passes beyond understanding as you guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus God give us that peace as we inhabit our praise not just as we walk out of these doors but as we go through our week and our lives God inhabit our praise god give us the peace that we can't even understand and we thank you thank you for the power that you have to change everything in jesus name amen you may be seated well good morning oh, it's so good to worship the lord isn't it Thank you so much for coming out this morning. My name is Marion Gaiman, and I want to welcome all of our online viewers. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. For those of you who are here who are in the sanctuary, I want to say thank you. Thanks for making Hopewell Church a part of your Sunday morning. We are so glad you are here. If you are new and this is your first time, we want to give you a special thank you. Um, there is a part at the bottom of your bulletin for you to write down some of your information. You can drop it off 
off at our very welcoming welcome center on your way out and receive a gift. And so we would like to connect with you. Now, if you have been uh, attending here for you know, maybe the past six to nine months or so, and you're wondering, how could I connect more with um, maybe some other new families, with our pastors and their spouses? Have we got an opportunity for you? Uh, next Sunday, if you have got about an hour after your church, after our church service, we are going to give you a, a free lunch. We're going to give you an opportunity to meet our pastors and their spouses and just connect, uh, you know, with some new families as well. So here's what you need to do. Because it is next Sunday, you need to sign up online as soon as possible. You can do it right now if you want. I'm not going to judge you. Um, <laughs> just get out your phones, go on info at hwcf.org and uh, sign up and uh, be a part of that wonderful opportunity next week. Um, next, I have such an exciting announcement for you all. If you looked at some of the paperwork that you got in your bulletin, you saw that we are hosting what I believe may be our first blood drive. I haven't been here, you know, for decades, so maybe some of that may be incorrect. But anyway, uh, we are having a blood drive. Uh, we are partnering with Miller Keystone, which is really awesome because that means that your donation stays local. Uh, do you know that each donation helps three people? That's amazing to me. I mean, think about how our Hopewell Church family can help our immediate our local area, our community. Um, it helps premature babies, cancer victims, people who are accident and burn victims. And so we've got 34 slots. So do the math. That means our Hopewell Church can impact over 100 lives in our community. And what I understand is that what often happens is everyone thinks, well, I'm not going to sign up someone else is going to do it. Well, guess what? You are that someone else. <laughs> so uh, please, please consider doing that. Um, and here's the cool thing. If you're thinking, you know what? I just don't have the time to do it. We're going to actually have it the last Sunday in August right here. Uh, it's going to be from Actually, that time is incorrect. It's actually from 9 o'clock till 2 o'clock. And uh, so that means you can come early, give before the service, and, you know, get a snack, come, come into the service. If you are going to even sign up during the service, we're going to live stream the service right back there. So you can just be blessed and, you know, listen to the service while you serve others, you know. So, uh, and there's going to be food, and uh, actually local businesses are donating extra special things for you all who give. So please, please consider doing that. Uh, there's going to be a table out in the lobby also for you to sign up uh, manually. If you don't like the QR code thing, um, you know, you, we're going to get you one way or the other. And um, after you sign up for the blood drive, you just continue on down the road and go to the kitchen because we have um, an excess of Wawa sandwiches. Uh, we partner with Wawa. We get their fresh and frozen sandwiches. We have an excess. We have helped so many people in our community with sandwiches and we have even more to bless you all with. So please get something, enjoy them during the week. They're, I understand they're, they're super yummy. So, um, all right, so that, that covers our food theme. Um, let's see. All right, so if you are prepared to give, thank you, thank you, thank you. There's a couple ways to give through our app, on our website, or actually physically right here. Uh, there's boxes in the back. Uh, you can drop off your gift there. Uh, also, there's a portion on the back of your uh, bulletin if you have a prayer request. You can also drop that off in the boxes on your way out. But um, we're just going to say thank you to God right now for the gifts. Dear God, you have just blessed us with a very, very generous generous church here. And we just thank you so much, God. But it is just a portion of what you have already blessed us with. We surely are not deserving of the blessings that you've given us, but we just give them back to you to say thank you. We are trusting that you're going to use it for kingdom work. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you are in fifth or sixth grade, we are going to say goodbye to you right now. Uh, you can go and be blessed. Um, don't stop and get a Wawa sandwich quite yet.
and get that after the service with your family. So anyway, they are going to, wow, there are a lot of fifth and sixth graders. That is phenomenal. They are going to be blessed uh, at this time. I just know it. And that is all for my announcements. If you would please just turn your attention to the video screens for the rest of them, that would be wonderful. Have a fantastic day. Good morning, church. We have a lot of great opportunities for connecting here. If you're still new to Hopewell and want to learn more about who we are, you are invited to meet our pastoral team over lunch. This opportunity lets you hear about what God is doing at Hopewell and what the vision for the future of our church is. Pastor Kobe will have a special time for elementary kids. This is the last week that you can register to attend. For more information, contact Anita Wissinger. If you're finding it difficult to fully engage with the Sunday morning message with your young child in your hands, or feel as though they could be distracting to those around you, or your child struggles to focus during Sunday school, parents are welcome to make use of our family viewing room. Parents will be able to watch the service live stream in personal comfort outside the main sanctuary while they can calm their child and keep them occupied. Welcome to Hopewell's Mission Spotlight Moment. This week, our Mission Spotlight is on Hope for the Children. Hope for the Children is a ministry that assists Christian orphanages in India, Nepal, and Haiti. Founded by a group of Christians to help children left fatherless after an ethnic war, Hope for the Children provides money for food, board, clothing, and education through monthly sponsors. The children are educated in private English schools and are encouraged to pursue their education through high school and on to college. Let's hear from the Bethel children. Hi. Greetings from Bethel children home. We are indebted to the love and concern we receive from Hopewell Church. Hi, I'm Lynette. It's overwhelming and encouraging to see that when no one could come to our help after losing my dad for my upbringing, HFC and Hopewell Church came to our rescue and provide all our needs. We, on behalf of Bethel Children Home, say a big thank you for everything you did for us. God bless Hopewell Church. Thank you. You can partner with them in prayer by praying for the children and their caretakers to remain healthy and safe during a second wave of coronavirus that has hit India and Nepal that has shut down the schools. For more information and updates, check out Hopewell's website under Ministries, Missions, and Outreach. To learn more about what's happening at Hopewell, check out the bulletin or visit hopewellchurch.org. And remember, live well, love well, hope well. My name is Gary Buck. I'm the lead pastor here at Hopewell, and thank you for all your prayers. Last week, we were on vacation last Sunday. and missed being with you all, but we were in uh, Florida, and uh, I think we brought the, the cool weather up with us uh, when we were watching the radar and the, the weather reports. It was hotter here than it was in Florida, so um, we, we, we chose her wisely. Um, well, it's great to be here, and uh, also, just keep a reminder, too, this, this week coming up is our junior high camp week, and so a lot of our youth... And uh, are going to be there. My wife's going to be there as a counselor, and I know we have uh, one of our own who's leading worship. So just keep them in prayer this week. It starts uh, tomorrow morning. So keep that the junior high camp in prayer at Camp Tell High. All right. Uh, at this time, uh, I want to introduce our guest speaker this morning. Many of you may know him. His name is Lester Zimmerman. He uh, was previously the lead pastor at Petra Church for how many years? Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight years. And uh, Lester and his wife Irma, who's here also, they, were, uh, they attended here back in the 80s, and then they were sent out to New Holland, PA, and founded Petro Church. And uh, so now you've, he's transitioned into a new role. He's always been the leader of uh, the Hopewell Network since about 2000. Yeah. Is that right? And so now he's transitioned fully into that role as the leader of the network. And so he gets to travel around to all the different churches in the Hopewell Network and kind of keep an eye on what's happening and just give us all some oversight in the, within the network. And so we asked uh, Lester to bring the word this morning. So would you all join me in welcoming Lester Zimmerman to the word? Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Gary. It's great seeing what God is doing at Hopewell. My heart, and for my wife and I, our hearts are really connected here because we, in a sense, were birthed out of here, as, Ga as Gary mentioned earlier. Um, and Gary, you're doing a great job leading the church, leading the team here. You have a great team of pastors here, a great team of elders as well. I think we should thank them for leading the church here. Last week, uh, Pastor Wayne introduced a new series that you're doing called Pursuing Gold, which is pursuing transforming habits in our lives. 
And he, he shared the importance of developing good habits, and then he also talked about how to do that. So if you missed last Sunday, I encourage you to go back because that's kind of the foundation for the series that he laid out for you. And it was a great message. I encourage you to, to uh, go back and look at, listen to that. The series is playing off, of course, the 2021 Olympics. And uh, by the way, Nigeria beat the USA in one of the, um, it, it's not the regular game, it was the pre-games that they're doing. And it was a big upset, so that was a bit discouraging last night. But anyway, we're going to have a good message this morning and be encouraged. So whether we're preparing for the Olympics or a high school recital that you're doing, the one thing that all of, the, all of these things have in common is the importance of practice. Practice doing the same thing over and over again until it just becomes natural uh, to what you're doing. Now, at first, whenever you're starting something new, uh, it, there's a bit of a drudgery involved in it, there, it because it's so much work, with so much concentration in what you're doing with that. I remember when our girls started piano lessons, and uh, I think it was more our vision for them than their vision for it, but they, they were continued to practice, and I know there was times they felt like just giving up. You know, this was so hard, trying to remember this, and trying to figure out how to make your hands work, you know, on the keys. But eventually, it became second nature to them. Eventually, they actually began to enjoy playing the piano. And I actually began to enjoy listening to them play the piano. Right now, I've taken up a, a sport called golf, I figured it can't be too hard to hit that little ball. I mean, just go out there and whack the ball. Well, golf, I've discovered, is one of the hardest games to figure out and to learn to play and then learn to enjoy it. And I'm, so I'm playing with some other guys, and they get mad half the time, and I wonder, why are you out here? You know, let's just have fun doing this. But I've determined that I am going to continue to practice until I can actually enjoy the game. And that I can go out there and actually put the ball where it's supposed to go. So I'm working on that right now. Practicing good habits, it's not only true for sports or for other things that we do, but it's also important for our spiritual growth. If we're going to grow spiritually, we need to practice certain habits and make them a natural part of our life. Sometimes habits such as Bible reading and praying uh, seem like hard work, and it's easy to set them aside for something more urgent that we need to do in our to-do list today, or, or something that's a little bit more fun than just sitting and reading your Bible. Well, if we continue to practice these disciplines, as we call them, they will eventually become part of us, and they will eventually become a joy in our life as we practice them, as we walk them out. I think all of us here desire a deeper walk with God. I mean, if I asked you to raise your hands, you probably would all do that. I mean, that's, that's why you're here in church this morning, is, is you, you want to pursue God. You want, you want more of Him in your life. But what I've discovered is that in our pursuit of God, a pursuit of a deeper walk with God, there are no shortcuts. I can't just give you one, two, three points, and, and you'll leave here and just have now immediately have a deeper walk with God. I can sh point you in a direction, and that's what we're doing this morning, but as you practice these things, as you do these things consistently in your life, the result will be a deeper walk with God. And so we want to talk about that a little bit this morning. Jeremiah, the prophet, tells us that the most important thing for us is to, the most important thing for us to pursue in life is our relationship with God. Jeremiah 9. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, let not the mighty man boast in his might, let not the rich man boast in his riches, but let him boast, let him who boasts, boast in this, that he understands and knows me. That I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, 
declares the Lord. I love what he's saying there is that success in life, all the spiritual disciplines that we're going to talk about this morning, we can do those things faithfully, but they are worthless if they don't lead us to a deeper relationship with God. That's what Jeremiah said. He said, this is the thing that we need to really be pursuing. It's not just how many, how many pages of the Bible did I read this week or, or all of the, the other disciplines, but it's have I grown closer to the Lord in what I am doing, in my walk with God? Is it leading me in that direction? You see, being a follower of Jesus is about having a growing relationship with God. That's why we say Christianity is, is not simply a religion, it's about a relationship. And that's what we're talking about in this series. We're saying, how can we pursue that relationship with God? Not just how can we become more religious. It's about a relationship. What I want to do now is, is briefly mention a number of habits that we should be pursuing, that we should be developing in our lives that will help us move in that direction. So I'm going, to, I'm going to touch on a few of them just briefly. And then the last one, the, my last point, I want to take more time to expound on. All of these things that we're going to talk about here do result in drawing us closer to the Lord if we're doing them with the right heart and if we consistently practice them. The things that I'm going to share are what I call tried and true habits that spiritual followers of God have practice down through the generations, down through the ages. You see it in the scriptures. You read, can read books of people that have been walking with God in the past. And all of these things that I'm going to talk about are part of the, were part of their life, part of their practice, part of their journey, part of their walk with God. The first thing I want to mention is something that we hear a lot about and because it's very important. The re is we want to pursue the regular practice of Scripture reading and prayer. S pursuing the Scripture and pursuing prayer. Uh, in Hebrews 4, it says the Word of God is alive and active. And that, that's quite a statement. The Word of God is alive and active. Something different about the Word of God than any other book that you would ever pick up and read. There's something about this that is supernatural. Maybe another way of saying is that God lives in His Word and communicates to us through His Word. So when I'm opening the Bible, when I'm reading it, there is something happening in communication, in connecting with God because it is alive, it's active, there's a sense of God's presence in the word, when I read it with an open heart and an open mind, God just supernaturally manifests himself to us through his word. So when you open it, it's like opening a doorway to the riches of God and his ability then to talk to you, to communicate to you through that. Pastor Wayne last Sunday said, if reading the Bible is kind of a new practice for you, instead of trying to start by reading the whole Bible in a month, is start small. Maybe, maybe just start with a couple verses every day. Just, but start. Start practicing. Start making it a part of your, your walk with God every day in, in how you uh, live and how you walk it out. Then with prayer, prayer is how God and his children stay in touch with each other. You know, we, we talk about somebody that maybe that lives in the other side of the country, and we say, well, how do, you, how do you stay in touch with them? If your child lives in California, how do you stay in touch with your child? Well, there's different ways we do that, you know, maybe through email or phone and, and, and so on. But with God, how do we stay in touch with God? How does he stay in touch with us? It's through prayer. So prayer is never meant to be a one-way communication. But as we pray, we also listen because God speaks to his children. His sheep know his voice through prayer as we talk with him. Prayer connects the heaven realm with the earth realm. I like to, every morning, this has become a habit for me, is when I wake up, when I have my senses that I'm awake, uh, the, the first thing I do before I get out of bed is talk to God. And I just, good morning, Lord. 
thank you for a good night's sleep. And then I think about maybe what, what's going to happen this day, day in my schedule. And I, I talk to him a little bit about that. And, and then I get up. You know, it's just like it's part of my relationship. He's, he's with me. And so I talk to him. The more you pray, the more kingdom results you'll see in your life. And the more prayer will become a joy in your life. The more you do it, the more it becomes part of you, and the more it becomes a joy in your life. It's as simple as that. It's really not complicated. I think it's one of the reasons the devil likes to distract us so much from prayer is because he knows the power in it. He knows what happens when we start communicating with God on a regular basis and we start developing that relationship. He's in trouble. And so if he can distract us from praying for our family every day, if he can distract us from the things that we're doing in prayer, uh, he can uh, have more of his way. Acts 2.42, we notice the, the practice of the early church. It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, that was through the scriptures, and to fellowship, and to breaking the bread, and to prayer. They devoted themselves. It became part of their lifestyle as believers in the early church. So the more we soak in the word and prayer, the closer we draw to God, and I believe the closer he draws to us through his word, through his prayer. Number two, the regular practice of confession. We're talking about some of the things to practice that become habits then in our lives. The regular practice of confession. Now, that, that may sound a little strange in an evangelical church, but uh, you know I understand we're not a Catholic church here this morning. But there's something about the regular confession of our sins that is powerful and freeing. We don't need to go to a priest to do that. We go directly to Jesus. But there's something about that. In 1 John 1, 9, we know this verse. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us or to purify us from all unrighteousness. Now, we usually use this verse when we're leading someone to Christ. and say, if you confess your sins to Jesus, you know, he will save you. You'll be born again. Uh, but the verse doesn't just simply mean one time and get saved. The verse is, is to be a continual practice in our lives where we confess our sins to the Lord. I find it personally refreshing whenever I enter a worship service or in my own private prayer times, to, to stop at times and just say, Lord, I just need you to cleanse me this morning. Lord, I confess my sins from this week. And I'm here. I want to lift up holy hands to you this morning in worship. You know, instead of just going, rushing through my week, coming to church, and we sing the songs, and we go home, it's, it's, we just stop, and we reconnect our heart with God. And that becomes, confession becomes a habit in our lives. You see, in the world we live in, it's a, it's a sinful, defiled world out there. And when we're interacting with the world, we pick up some of that defilement at times. And so we come to the Lord and we come with our sins of commission, things that we've done, or our sins of omission, things that we should have done and we didn't, and we just bring those before the Lord. We confess them. And he forgives us. And he purifies us from all unrighteousness. What a blessing to be able to come before the Lord and receive that. A regular prayer that David would pray that I think is good for us to pray is in, found in Psalms 139, 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. That could be a regular prayer. That could be a prayer for us right here this morning. Lord, as we're here, as I'm ready to worship you this morning with my brothers and sisters, search me, O oh God. Know my heart. Test me. And know my anxious thoughts. A lot of anxiety that we walk in in this, in this day. And we just bring all that before the Lord. We confess all of that to the Lord as the Holy Spirit reminds us of what we need to do. Number three, so confession draws us closer to God. Number three, the practice of community life with other believers. We need other believers to help us to grow 
spiritually. We don't grow spiritually in a vacuum or by ourselves. We need each other. I need you. You need me. We need each other to grow in our walk with the Lord. Regular attendance with my brothers and sisters, regular interaction with them, regular fellowship draws us closer to God and, of course, closer to each other as well. Hebrews 10, let us think of ways to motivate one another. All right, let's, let's have some ideas there. How can we motivate each, other, motivate each other to what? To acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Small groups are a great way to practice community life together, where we can open our hearts, where we can share together, we can pray for each other, we can encourage each other. We have a small group that, that we meet with, and they pray for us, and it's been such a blessing in our lives. Number four, I'm running through these pretty quickly. These are things that you've heard before, but I'm just encouraging you and reminding you, stirring you up uh, this morning in those, these things. The practice of solitude. These are the practices that help us develop a spiritual walk with the Lord. The practice of solitude. Uh, solitude is creating space in our lives where we can just kind of stop and reconnect with God, where we can uh, kind of set aside all the, the noise that's going on in our head, the noise around us, and we can quiet ourselves before the Lord. Dr. David Jeremiah uh, had this quote. He says, in stillness and solitude, we can think clearly, pray earnestly, and know he is God. Sometimes that's just what we need to know. He is still God. He is still in control. And, and we find those places of uh, mental, emotional, spiritual rest in those times of solitude that we create in our lives. Jesus would do that, Luke 5, as often as possible. I think it was pretty often. As often as possible, Jesus withdrew to out-of-way places for prayers. He just would get away. He created space. He created solitude in his life. Uh, in his life, if you've never taken a personal retreat, I encourage you to do that. You don't have to go find some expensive place. Uh, it may be just taking a walk. It may just be, uh, you know, just getting away for a period of time and s spending some time reflecting on God, reflecting on your life. In quiet places, we draw closer to God. The next one is the practice of tithing. You say, well, why did you throw that one in here? Well, it's really one of the spiritual growth areas, one of the spiritual disciplines, one of those things that comes with a promise for our walk with the Lord. See, tithing not only supports the work and the expansion of God's kingdom, but it also keeps our possessions from possessing us. And in the Western world, in a materialistic society, we need that discipline in our lives. We need to uh, create that, that environment, that walk with the Lord where our, our hearts are continually toward him. Tithing, if you're not familiar with it, is giving 10% of your income to the Lord. And uh, in the scriptures, they talked about it being a weekly or regular thing that they would do. Tithing, then, is a weekly reminder that everything I have belongs to the Lord. So every Sunday, I'm reminded again that the things that God has entrusted to me, the finances, the possessions, all of those he has given to me belong to him, and uh, I look to him on how to use those faithfully as good stewards. Malachi 3.10, there's a promise that God gives with this because he knows how important it is, not just for his kingdom, but for us. He says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. 
That sounded like a pretty good deal to me, a pretty good promise. You can never outgive God. And so I encourage you, if you have never tithed or never made it a regular practice in your life, start doing it. Start doing it. And uh, it becomes an act of worship. And it will, it will draw you closer to the Lord as you walk with him in that. Number six, the practice of fasting. There's a mystery in fasting. We don't usually like to talk about fasting. I mean, that sounds harsh. It sounds, wow, like beating yourself up or something. Why would anybody want to fast? But there's a mystery in fasting that it moves the heart of God toward us and moves our hearts toward God. It brings breakthrough in prayer. I don't, I'm, I don't have a message on tithing this morning, so I'm just explaining just very briefly that in the, in the spirit realm, tithing, I mean, fasting uh, brings breakthrough. Did you know that other religions practice this? Because in the spirit realm, they understand that fasting connects things in the spirit realm, releases things in the spirit realm. So they do it in a demonic kind of way. But for the kingdom, as we fast, uh, we engage with the spirit of the living God, and it brings a breakthrough. The early church practiced fasting as a regular part of their, their, their lives, their, their church. Acts 13, 2. While they were serving the Lord and fasting, making it sound again like it was just a very normal thing, while they were doing this, the Holy Spirit said to them, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul to do the work to which I have called them. <clears throat> God often will speak to us through our fasting, not, not always when we're fasting, but as a result of the time of fasting, things begin to open up and become clear. Fasting, again, if, if this is not something that you do, it's not difficult. It's, just start somewhere. Start, maybe it's skipping lunch one time a month and taking that time for a particular prayer concern that you have in your heart. Connect fasting to that prayer concern. Just start somewhere. But as you continue to practice, you'll see the value in it, and it'll become a joy in your life, and you will be drawn closer to the Lord as a result of that. Now, number seven, this is the one I want to uh, spend the rest of my time on here, is I've called it practicing his presence. We're talking about practicing all these different habits, and they... And they they help us in our spiritual growth. But this is another one that has become very real to me and very, very key, I think, in the walk of a, of a believer. In the church today, there is this mindset that causes us to live, even though we might say we don't believe that, but it causes us to live at times as if God's presence is somehow limited to the church gathering. We're here this morning. Uh, you know, we, we say things like, did you feel God's presence in worship this morning? Wasn't it awesome? And that may be true, and that's wonderful, and that happens, you know, all the time. But subtly, if we're not careful, we begin to think that when we walk out of these doors, that God's presence somehow either shifts or changes or is left behind. And so we need to come back next week to experience God's presence again. And that's not the way it is at all. We think about his presence when we're together in church, but little about his presence sometimes in our homes, when we're about do, uh, going about our daily routines with our jobs, when we're driving in the car, when we're at school, when we're playing sports, or even as we're sleeping, that, that sometimes we don't think of his presence. We just kind of Go through life. And uh, I like Psalm 102, verse 28. The children of your servants will live in your presence. Their descendants will be established before you. I love that. Not go in and out of your presence. Now, in the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, they, they had to go into the temple or in and out of God's presence. But in the new covenant, the spirit of God lives within us. So there is this sense where we don't go in and out anymore. We don't come in and out of the church of his presence. 
We bring his presence with us. That's why we experience his presence, because we all brought his presence with us. And now we're joining our hearts and releasing praise to the Lord. And the Lord inhabits the praises of God's people. And so we experience his presence in a special way. But when we go out those doors, we're all taking his presence with us. See, that makes a difference when you're on your job and you're working with a coworker who's not saved. They, are, they experience God's presence. There's something different about you. They don't know what it is, but they're, you, you manifest God's presence wherever you go. Isn't that wonderful? You just can't lock God's presence up because now it's in his people, wherever his people go. What, so what we mean by practicing God's presence is simply becoming aware, more aware of God's presence with you, in you, wherever you go, wherever you are, all the time. That's what we mean about practicing God's presence. There's a man by the name of Brother Lawrence who served as a cook in a monastery over 300 years ago. And he talks about this concept of practicing God's presence as a life-changing experience in his book entitled, The Practice of the Presence of God. And he uses the word practice because it's not something we naturally do. We usually get so entwined and and, uh, focused on what's happening around us with our other senses that somehow we don't stay tuned in to God's presence. So he says we need to learn how to practice God's presence. And if we do that, it will make a difference in our lives, practicing his awareness sharpening our spiritual senses. So let me share some things that he shares, but also some things that I think will be helpful on how to practice his presence, because that's my assignment. Pastor Wayne gave you homework last week, so here's your homework, is to to really think about this throughout your week this week. Practicing his presence, becoming more aware that he is with you, that he is in you, and that he is affecting things around you. So here here are some things, three ways that you can do this. You can practice God's presence by talking to him while you work, or while you're at school, or whatever you're doing. Just talk to him about everything. You don't have to pray out loud. You don't have to close your eyes. Please, no, while you're driving the car. Keep your eyes open. But you can practice his presence in the car with you just by beginning to talk to him. We learn to abide in his presence. You know, the presence of God is kind of like the airwaves. It's, it's always there. You can tune in anytime. But even more of that, he is within us. The good news is that God's presence is not limited to the prayer closet, church service. But while I'm driving, while I'm doing the dishes, while I'm sitting in school, on my job, playing sports, whatever I'm doing, I can talk to him as I would my best friend sitting with me, playing with me, what, doing whatever I'm doing, that my best friend is there because he is our best friend, the Spirit of God among us. And so we just begin talking to him. Uh, I think there's so much that God has in communing with us if we would just stay tuned in to him and listen to what he is saying. Brother Lawrence says, during any daily duty, Lift your heart up to him because even the least little remembrance, even the least little remembrance will please him. You don't have to pray out loud. He's nearer than you can imagine. And so just talk to him. Just focus your heart on him. So it takes some work, but it becomes natural if you work at it. It becomes natural. I'm not saying I... I've developed this to the extent that I would love to have that in my life, but just becoming aware that he's with me wherever I go. So talk to him. Just talk to him about whatever's on your mind, whatever's on your heart. Just talk to him. You know, you can get away with that now, uh, with people see your lips moving, because, you know, people have their phone thing going on, and, you know, they're, they're, they're talking all the time. You look at them, what's, and you realize, oh, they're on the phone, and so they're just, they're just talking. And so you can do the same thing. People don't know the difference. You're just talking to God. So they they don't think you're crazy anymore if they see your your lips moving. The second thing is practice God's presence by thanking him 
all day long, thanking him for everything. So, the, again, this is so simple. These things are so simple. Thanking him for your health that enables you to go to work. Thanking him for the car. When's the last time you thanked him for the car that you're driving? You know, and all, instead of just thinking, a car I wish I had. But just, just became, become thankful and grateful. And what, what will happen is you'll become more and more aware of his presence. Thank him for the money to buy gas while you're pumping gas. Just thank him. Lord, I thank you for, for the money I have to put gas in my car. This, instead of complaining about the price of gas going up, just, just, just become thankful to him. Thank him for your job. Thank him for your house that you live in. You get the picture? Just, just, look, just begin thanking him. Thank him for the clothes you have to wear today. Thank you for this church. Thank you for... Just be, th- begin to thank God. If you practice gratitude toward God, it'll not only make you more in tune with God's presence, it'll also change your attitude, attitude toward life and people. It really will. And then practice God's presence by asking God to help you with little things all day long. See, I, what, what Brother Lawrence and what I'm saying here this morning is, is this just becomes so, so relational. Again, like you would with your spouse or your best friend, is you just begin talking. And so, Lord, help me drive safely today. Lord, uh, help me as I prepare this meal. Lord, Help me do a good job with this task. Lord, help me f- be friendly to the customers that come, even those that complain. Lord, help me with this report that I need to turn in at school tomorrow. Lord, help me stay focused as I worship. So many distractions, right? Knowing that we need God's grace in our lives helps us to be aware and to appreciate God's presence and God's help. So take time to draw his presence into whatever you're doing. That's the practice. That's practicing his presence. Whatever we're doing, I'm thinking about him all the time. I'm talking to him about everything all the time because I know he's right here with me all the time. So I, I just have this ongoing conversation with him. And I, I'll end with this. Uh, this is a verse in Exodus 33 where he, where I, He talks about God's presence brings rest, peace, and joy to us. Exodus 33, 14, the Lord replied, my presence will go with you. He was talking to Moses. And I'll give you rest. My presence will go with you, and I'll give you rest. I believe that's a promise that we can apply to our lives today as well. This week, wherever you're going, his presence is going with you, and he wants you to learn to walk and to live in that place of rest in him. His presence creates rest. Outside of that, there's turmoil. I mean, there's crazy things going on in our nation, in our world, and anxiety is flooding people's hearts, but when you become aware of his presence with you all the time, there is a place of rest for the people of God. We can rest. He's in control. He is with me. He's with my children today. There's a place of rest that we can enter into. I believe we'd be a lot less uptight and stressed out if we simply practice his presence and learn how to commune with God all day long. There's joy in that. There's peace in that. We're going to close with the song about the goodness of God. The presence of God is a testimony of God's awesome love, his awesome goodness toward us. Did you know that God likes you? God likes you. He wants to be with us. He wants to enjoy life with us. And these habits that we're talking about, I believe, help us to draw closer to God and to enjoy and embrace his goodness. The presence of God is all about the fact that he's a good, good father to us, and he loves us. He wants to be with us. He wants to be involved in whatever we're doing. He wants to enjoy life with us because he's come to give us that kind of life, the abundant life. So stand together, and uh, Pastor Rick will help us to
Practice his presence in worship right now as we tell him how we appreciate his goodness to us. Father, we applaud your goodness. We applaud your faithfulness, Lord. We applaud all of your character. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would open our eyes to you, that you would help us to sense your presence every moment of every day. 
and strengthen us, Lord, to put some of these practices in, into action, Lord. Even if we start small, help us to see you more, to sense you better. That we may love like you love. And that we may honor you with our very lives. Move in us and through us. Holy Spirit, please. We pray in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus, our Savior. And all of those in agreement said amen. Amen.